Okay, first of all, I apologize. I, I don't swear in public. That's a line I set for myself years ago. I don't cross it. I know I'm disappointing you. I'm sorry. That being said, this is an adults only show. No kids here. Santa Claus is a vampire. <laughs> Look at the evidence. Look at the evidence. He lives in a place where the sun does not shine for six months out of the year. Whenever he does leave his castle, <clears throat> sorry, workshop, it's night out. He's hundreds of years old. He's inhumanly fast and strong. He's surrounded by magical creatures. He's able to shapeshift. How else does he get in all those different sized chimneys? He's able to read minds, which is how he's able to know what you want for Christmas, even if the letter doesn't get to him, which, thanks to our current Postmaster General, is becoming more of an issue. <laughs> now, why does he give him presents instead of attacking people? I'm guessing it was like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer Angel type thing. He was cursed at some point. So, whose blood does he drink? Simple, the bad kids. I think the coal in the stocking is some kind of seasoning, but I'm not sure. Now, actually, I feel kind of bad about even bringing Christmas up because I'm sure a lot of you are probably tired of it already, and we still got three weeks to go. I've come to the conclusion that the Grinch was a whiner. Because I was watching Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the animated version. The original animated version. Hollywood really does need to get some new ideas. But I was watching that, and it starts off on Christmas Eve. And the Who's down in Whoville are just now wrapping their presents. They're just now decorating their houses. They're just now trimming the trees. Christmas Eve. Cut to the Grinch up on his mountain with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow. For 53 years I've put up with this now. Okay, follow my logic here. If the Who's on Christmas Eve are just getting ready, then it stands to reason that Christmas Day is going to be the day of celebration, and the day after Christmas will be pretty much back to normal. That means that the Grinch is complaining about two days of Christmas. Two. Let's talk about how we celebrate Christmas in this country today. And by the way, I'm only talking about the commercial nature of Christmas, not the spiritual, which I think we can all agree gets pretty well steamrolled. We're going to start off in December, Christmas Ground Zero. 25 days in December up to and including Christmas Day. If you can walk into any retail establishment and you do not see a Santa Claus, a reindeer, or a snowman, bravo. You have found something rarer than a Bigfoot riding a unicorn. It's everywhere. But we're just starting, because before that you have November. Now November used to be its own thing, the month of Thanksgiving. Now it's Christmas the pregame. So you add in another 30 days for November. Still not done. Because let's face it, they bring out the Christmas decorations the same time they're bringing out the jack-o'-lanterns and the Halloween costumes. Add in another 31 days in October. Still not done. We have Christmas in July, thanks to whatever lunatic came up with that idea. Add in another week for that. And then once Christmas is finally over, do all the decorations go away? Nope. Now you got clearance sales. Add in another two weeks. We're up to 107 days. 107 days of Christmas every year. And the Grinch lost his mind and decided to commit massive amounts of theft and property damage at 106 days. And his were spread out over half of a century. <laughs> Think about that. 107 days. Do you know how long winter itself is? Roughly 90. So whenever someone says, enjoy the festive holiday season, that's what it is, a season. Spring, summer, fall, Christmas, you can put it that way on a calendar, it works. That's nearly one third of a year. That's too much. Can you imagine if you had to deal with any other holiday that way? Like, for your birthday, if you had to deal with it like two months leading up to it? So, so help me God, if I have to eat one more piece of cake or hear one more person saying happy birthday to you, I'm going to burn this entire city to the ground. Oh, and the songs. The songs, that's what could really break your spirit. If a genie came up to me and said, Jason, I'm going to give you three wishes to better mankind. 
Okay, uh, wish number one, we'll, we'll get rid of Adolf Hitler completely. He's, he never existed. Okay, okay, good, that's a good start. Uh, next one, no nuclear weapons. Like, ease everybody's mind about that. Okay, okay, and for your third wish, I wish that they never recorded all I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> uh, uh, someone else feels my pain. I like it. Uh, don't you want to think about something like, I don't know, world hunger, homelessness? Yeah, ask me about that in April right now. That's my answer. Christmas songs are so insane. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Okay, okay, I understand it. Dad dresses up as Santa. Mom's looking hot. He kisses her. Kid walks in. Therapy. Good. And that was the father's fault. If you're playing Santa, you gotta commit to the role. He's a happily married man. He's not gonna go mess around with someone just because her husband decided to bed himself down for a long winter's nap. No! And if you want to be kinky that way, fine. You, hey, usually that beer gut is disgusting, but right now in the red, kind of hot. You know, that's fine, that's fine. You can do that when the kids are back in school. I'm not even a parent, and I know that they're not sleeping all the way through Christmas Eve. Then you got the 12 days of Christmas. Oh, my mom hates that one. Women, if you've ever wondered why your man gave you a gift that makes you question his sanity, or intelligence, or both, this song would give you a pretty good idea. I mean, we know that jewelry was an option when the song was written. Number five, five gold rings. But no, this guy's going like, you know what I think she'd really like? You know what I think would get me in her good graces? Eight maids of milk. <laughs> That'll do. That'll make her happy. Some songs are just insane. The most wonderful time of the year. Starts off fine. There'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for roasting, caroling out in the snow. Good. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. Which one of you psychopaths is telling scary ghost stories at Christmas time? Granted, that's probably the reason why we have the Nightmare Before Christmas, which I'm thankful for, but still, it makes no sense. But the song that drives me personally insane, that drives me around the bend, that gets me unreasonably angry is, I'll be home for Christmas. And you might say, that's, that's not one of those songs that, why, why? I'll explain. Because I always picture it now as a phone conversation. <clears throat> I'll be home for Christmas. You can plan on me. All right, thanks, Jimmy. You're the last one to respond. Like, good Lord, man, I sent out those invitations months ago. But hey, hey, you're coming. That's good. That's good. You know, who's co you know who's coming this month? Actually, Aunt Marge from Alaska. She's been trying to get here in the last 10 years. Every time there's been some sort of blizzard or something. But she said, you know what? I'm making it this year. You know how? She's rented a dog sled. Can you believe that? She said, I'm going to be here. So she's going to be so happy to hear you. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents neath the tree. Uh... Dude, uh, not to be judgmental, but you're sounding kind of greedy now. First of all, presents. It's Christmas time. Presents are a given. You don't need to ask for presents at Christmas time. We got it. Uh, snow? Yeah, Aunt Edna has thrown the fear of God into us many times, but she is not, in fact, a god. Uh, I can't promise snow, and before you ask, no, I'm not going out to the prop store to buy fake snow so you can have your Bedford Falls experience. And, uh, mistletoe? Dude, you do realize this is like a family gathering, right? <laughs> you really want to check your 23andMe report before you go smacking lips with anyone that you find there. Because I'll tell you right now, 
I don't want to end up on Maury nine months from now finding out that you are the father and having to explain why we're a family of heathens. <laughs> and then this is the part that really snapped in my head a few years ago to raise the hate of the song. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light green gleams. I'll be home for Christmas. If only in my dreams. Dude, you, you just said, you said that you were going to be here. You can plan on me. I, we're getting food together. We're getting presents together. We're having to figure out sleeping arrangements there. I have it recorded. You know why? Because you've been so blasted and unreliable. I have a feeling one of these recordings has got me people as exhibit A one of these days. So, no, no. If Aunt Marge can go through a blizzard on a dog sled with her bad hip, then you're driving your 72 El Camino a couple hundred miles to the house. <laughs> it's too much to deal with. It really is. I don't know about you, but I actually have to like shut my brain down for like two months minimum just to make Christmas feel somewhat special whenever the day finally gets here. So it doesn't make you a Grinch or a Scrooge if you are just tired of it by December 25th. You're just dealing with stuff that makes your heart feel like it'd be two, smize, two sizes too small. It's not your fault. And the, the bad part is Christmas really does have something for everyone. You like family? Boom, got you covered. You like food? Boom, got you covered. You like greed? Boom, got you covered. Anything that makes you happy, there's something in Christmas for you. So, to wrap up, I hope that in a few weeks when that day rolls around, you do find something that makes you happy. Enjoy the festive holiday season. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>